Hey, did you know there's a lot more going on right now at our websites? Are you watching all four of them? If not, check them out. There's a list right here. We got three YouTube channels and one audio-only channel for your enjoyment. So come on and dig in and see all the stuff we do here at the North American Snow Queen Palace. Hello, Mary, everybody. It's Michelle Marie Delani, and of course, today is the 21st of January 2014. And yes, my kitties are here today. Um, today, we're going to talk about um, a couple different topics. And again, the sun's going to get ready to creep its way in the window, which means that we're going to have to deal with things as we go. Um, I got to my doctor's office and it's really confusing uh, some of the notes. Um, I'm not going to go through all this right now. I'm just going to just briefly give you a rundown. Um, okay, let's get the rundown. First thing, good news and bad news. Let's start with the good news. Um, majority of the systems in my body are doing good. The thyroid is in control. My liver's in control. Um, heart's in good shape. My kidneys are in good shape. Um, my cholesterol is... Um, well, i got the notes here, but so-so for the most part. Um, if you want me to go into all the details... And, um, I don't need to, body temperature is on the high side, according to his digital thermometer, which doesn't surprise me. Um, I don't know what all this stuff means as far as the BSA, I know what the BMI is. And he agreed that it actually a BMI is actually is a form of density calculation. Mine is forty point one seven kilograms per cubic meter, um, which isn't so bad. Um, he also pointed out to me. I don't see him writing any notes here on this here. Um. Don't see anything in particular. It stands out. Um, okay. Um, so let's just tell you what he tells me. He said to me, it's not surprisingly, that my vitamin D3 is down, which is not at all surprising given the fact that. Um, it has, I have not been in the sun much, and my vitamin D3 is embarrassingly low. My calcium is even more worse than my vitamin D3. Um, the risk of me having a bone fracture or teeth fractures, hint, hint, is pretty bad. Um, you're going to treat you like a fine Stradivarius. <laughs> what? That, that delicate look. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you could break a hip pretty easy if you're not careful. Yeah, you know, that's the problem. Uh, yes, I could break a hip very easily. Um, in fact, any other bones in my body are fragile. Um, because, oh, I am severely low on my calcium. Um, he recommended that I take a calcium uh, substitute. Uh, in supplement to 600 milligrams um, of calcium. He recommended Caltrate. I could probably take other kinds of OTC calcium from uh, pharmacy. Same thing with the D3. Um, because I don't think both are considered OTC and they are not usually covered by most medical plans as I found out from the local pharmacist. So um, even if you have a script, it doesn't make it any better. Because, like, I found out it's D2 you can get with a prescription, not D3. Don't see why that is, but I'm just telling you what it is. 
Um, so, um, Hulk's wise, like Lemmy says, I am always at the risk of, I need to be treated very gently, physically, my body is, um, the risk of fractures is extreme, um, which means I have to make sure to be careful not to break a bone because otherwise it's not going to heal. No, no, it won't. <laughs> and we all know that it's been statistically proven that if you break your hip, the average lifespan after hip fracture is like three years. Oops, I want to live a long time, but um, I, I had a chance to sim- pull out some information from uh, complimentary information from Ancestry.com and and sadly enough, the lifespan of my family is not that good. It's actually dropped. It's dropped a lot. Um, the Delaney family used to live to almost be centurions. We are not centurions material anymore. We have lost that ability. We have lost that edge according to the calculation. However, please understand a couple things. Looking at the information that was presented to me by Ancestry.com, I'm not really into this stuff, so you're going to have to bear with me. First of all, it was only the free information they'd give me. Um, the average lifespan of my family is about 80. So if I can live to be 100, they say, you always tend to underestimate your age you're going to live to. Well, let's see what happens. Because, first of all, unlike a lot of my family members, I don't smoke. I don't drink. Um, my family eats a lot of pasta, and we eat a lot of Norwegian food. Because we are both Italian Norwegian, and we, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. Um, so, what does this mean for me, as far as you? Well, it just reminds me that, first of all, I thank, the, I thank Mother God that I have had a long life so far with few complications and that I am still going out there kicking and doing my thing, chug a lug, chug a lug. You know, it's, it's not really been, I have not been doing too bad. But, you know, I'm getting older and it's, it's starting to, I'm starting to have issues with age. Um, my hearing loss is definitely not helping but it did at least confirm what I suspected about the calcium um because you see the first thing is is that um my calcium he says is like in the 20s he said that's pre-menopausal I said well is that good or bad he says you're 46 years old he says you got you got the calcium level of a 20 year old hmm Okay, um, I guess that could be good, that could be bad. Except, of course, the sad truth is, is that when you get older, you lose calcium. And when you do, it means that your bones don't have the density. And when they don't have the density, they become weak and they break. Just like teeth, okay? So my teeth, my case, my teeth, my the one in the rear, the molar broke because of, again, maybe it's been a long time occurrence prior to having him check my calcium levels to find out that perhaps if I could have found a way to fix the calcium deficiency um, earlier, maybe I would not have risked breaking a molar. Possibly, but maybe not. Because, I mean, you put a lot of stress on your teeth. Yes, I do. Now, now the weight... I hate to say it that way, but uh, I, I, I told him, I says, is your skill calibrated? I said, because I don't think, I don't have as much fat on me, and yet, according to your scale, I weigh just a pound less than I did last time. That doesn't make any sense. And I I said, that just, it just doesn't make any sense all to me. And he did answer one question I had about the issue about BMI. It's It's a density calculation. I said, okay, that makes sense. So, you know, kilograms per cubic meter. So why are you using superscript 2 instead of superscript 3? Somebody obviously made a typo in the, in the, in the formula or something. Um, I know it doesn't mean a lot to some people, but he said to me, don't forget, he said the BMI also is based on everything. 
and we know the muscles are not as um, less dense than flap. Let's be honest. You see these arms? These are arms are muscular, baby. They carry a lot of shit. <laughs> um, and and that's the truth. I mean, have I been outside much in the summer in the winter time? No, I should got more. You should. By the way, how was the situation with your account? Um, you said you were going to talk about the State of the Union. Very good. Like, yes, we are going to talk about the so too today. State of the Union, uh, as you call it, the State of Tyranny. Um, first of all, let's start with the b- basics here. As far as I said, the shit case. Um, I don't think Obama has a grip of reality. I said this in the waiting room. I actually got that club. I should put that up. But I'm going to start fresh um, and rehash some of the things I didn't mention in the waiting room. Um, I have seen enough bullshit from this president that I do not understand where he is coming from. The idea of saying to everybody, we'll give you free to your college education if you work for it. What kind of work are you talking about? I mean, are you talking about work-study kind of work? Are you talking about bringing home some money? Or are you talking about um, you do some community service and give you two-year education? What does that do? The problem is, is twofold. Number one, who's going to pay for it? Um, that's This is not the kind of situation right now that Congress can afford. Um, it's, it's really expensive to do education like that. And... It's something that I feel is just not practical to do. You can't get money out of a stone, and the economy is not stable. So what do you suggest? Oh, let's tax the upper 1% at a higher rate than that and give more tax credits to the lower middle class. I don't have a problem with that, except for one thing. Why don't we just get rid of the stupid tax code, start over, create a new one that's a graduated tax code, or even let's make it easy. Let's make it a flat tax. That way everybody knows exactly how much they can calculate. They can pay themselves. Then they can say, IRS calculation is you take your total wages, multiply it by a certain percentage, you pay all that check into the Internal Revenue Service, and you're done. That would be easy. Oh, yeah. If you have children, family, maybe we can give allowances for that. But let's not go crazy here with um, creating a graduated tax system we have with tax brackets. It's just too much of a mess. And it's not helping and it's making people confused. I mean, our even back, our, our president, our uh, Roosevelt, couldn't even calculate his own taxes. I thought, oh, what's a which one whistle knows that? I think it was, no, I think it was good for Wilson, wasn't it? One guy said, and that was back in the 20s and 30s, I can't calculate how much I owe you. Here, here's a check. You figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's because the tax code even then was bad. Um, having tax brackets and everything else. Let's just simplify things, okay? And as far as paying for people going to school, mm, I don't... I don't think that's going to work out very well. And I don't think Congress, when they look through all the nickels and dimes, is going to be too enthusiastic about having somebody tell them, oh, yes, by the way, you know, we can save money if we do certain things, yada, yada, yada. We can make money doing certain things. We can create certain tax brackets, take tax credits, and this and that. It's just too aggravatingly complex. We've got to start fresh. Now, by the way, as running for Board of Selectmen, I'm not going to be worrying about the internal tax, internal revenue tax code. That doesn't affect me uh, in my campaign. It does affect, though, the local taxes that are paid to the city and town of Winston. Not so much... The taxes that you pay to the federal government or to the state or to the county. Um, so the most important thing is we got to start um, looking at the situation, what we're paying out. In, and also on the town level, 
And this applies to the federal, too. So let's be honest here. We have to go over that budget. We have line by line. We have to look at every single thing that is spent and then carefully assess what we can cut and what we can keep. Now, I'd love to be able to keep everything as it is on the town level, but there are things in this town that are not getting done, and there are things in this town that are pushing more buttons than it's worth. For example, the latest town meeting to rename the East End Park. Why? What's wrong with the name of the park now? It's a park. It's on the east end of town. You don't need to rename it. We don't even have a west end park. Why do you want to rename it Veterans Memorial or something like that? Why? We know it's a Veterans Memorial. We see the obelisk standing there. They just said it shows the veterans of, of the foreign wars such as Vietnam War and all that that have served. And why do we need to give a new name to a park that has been in this town at that location for at least 100 years? It does not add up. It's stupid. It's stupid, 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 stupid. Spending money to rename a park that has never needed a new name. It's not like the song, I'm riding in a desert on a horse with no name. Yeah, right. Well, I'm walking through a park with no name. Actually, it doesn't have a name. It's East End Park. Okay. It's, it's what it's always been. It's what it should always be. There's no reason to change it. Um, same thing with uh, the fact is that we don't even have a West End Park. Or do we? No, we don't. We don't have a West End Park. It's the only park we have. Um, what about Soldier's Monument? That's always been Soldier's Monument. That was created that way from the Civil War. It's not going to change. Right. Um, but it's one place most people don't even go to. I love going there because it reminds me of the cloisters in New York. It's kind of got that gothic look to it, but it's not really... you got to go up there again sometime. We will. When? Probably probably in a few months. When, when all the snow and the slush is gone in early May, March, we'll go up there to that park and check it out. Um, it's really pretty um, desolate. It's not really much going on up there. It's like a graveyard. It is like a graveyard. You're absolutely right. In fact, it's it's another memorial, to, in this case, to the Civil War veterans and who had served in the Civil War. And um, and it has was well, used as a lookout point in World War II, but it really hasn't been, you know, a big deal. Um, so the point I'm trying to say is, is that um, I think this town's got some stupid ideas. The other thing, too, is that they keep trying to push changes to the public school system. You do realize that Winston does not need three elementary schools? No. It could easily get away with two. Maybe even one if it's big enough. Well, the problem is it seems like we, they want us to spend more money and bonds and shit to spend for we can't afford this town can't even fix its streets we got roads that need where Halliburton Avenue has got a bridge and it's so downright lethally dangerous it's falling apart it's structurally unsound the one on Main Street is only a few shades better I'm talking about the one that goes right next to the community college here that thing is <laughs> not as bad as Halbert, but it's bad Okay, it's over the same Stowe River. It's over the same Stowe River. So the problem is is that the town is not spending the money to fix the things they should fix, and it's their stupid things that they're working on that makes no sense, like renaming the park, but it shouldn't even bother to rename. It's already got a name, and everybody knows what it is. It's East End Park. It's the only park we got in the whole entire town that I know of. Um, likewise, you know, we got, a two, we got two ball fields. Um, we got the one in Raleigh Plaza, Raleigh Park, and we also got the one right next across the street, Cold Walker Field. Um, long ago, we used to have the fireworks uh, fireworks at Walker Field, and they don't do them there anymore, and I think they do them early plus now. They do them in the carnival, don't they, in August? Yeah, in August, okay. But they don't do anything um, other than that, Fireman's Carnival. Um, the thing is, is that they're just... There's just stupid stuff that are not being done. That there's things that should be done that are not being done. Sounds like you, huh? Well, because like, you know, there, you know, you should be taking calcium. You know, you should have been taking calcium from me. Oh, I was eating all that ice cream. Yeah, and then your calcium was higher, right? 
Nah, sort of. Sort of. But now it's really down low because you haven't been eating ice cream. But then every time I eat ice cream, I blimp up. Look, okay, so that's the problem. So you eat ice cream, you get fat. Because you need the dairy for the calcium and the vitamin D. But now you don't eat the ice cream and then you lose the calcium. And you're losing bone density. And you're losing vitamin D. Which is also causing you to go down to your, into your shares. you you got to do something quick. Otherwise, I'm going to end up seeing you in a body cast. If I even live that long. Mm. Well, let's hope to God that doesn't happen, honey. But it is a pretty big problem. I'll give you that. All right. Um, what else do we get going on? Um, anything else to talk about tonight? Yeah, we got a lot to talk about. Uh, first of all, we got the the, uh, the little pieces of uh, e are on their way. They're not here yet. Um, but I um, I'm just a little bit, as I said, a little distressed about that the visit to the doctor. I'm going to show that video here. So you can see what I said earlier. Michelle Marie, it's yeah. morning, and of course, I am finally at the doctor's office. The taxi yeah. got here a little early. They're having their lunch, and my appointment is at 1.30, and it's about, eh, right about uh, 10 minutes after 1, maybe? So i got about 20 minutes to wait. Uh, I'm not no, looking forward to, to getting my mask done, but yeah, 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 you know that is, hey? Uh... Anyway, so um, my ride from the yeah. local transit right. got me here about a half hour before the appointment, so I got to sit around and do nothing for a little bit. And I no, keep realizing I keep I making the same ride. screw up. Why do I keep writing and saying 2014? It's 2015. Oh, uh, <laughs> I keep doing it every time. And then I ended up having to go back into the video editor and fix that typo. Um, I didn't do that with this last video. Me and Lemmy did this morning, but we will probably get that done today. I got we gotta get some new videos in. And um, right now, like I said, I got this doctor's appointment, and I want to get that done with. Well, I want to show you some real quick uh, for those of you who may not have known. Anything about this area, I mean, um, this used to be the no, old uh, hospital building. This no, is um, yeah. where uh, you can study all kinds of stuff and stuff. This used to be a library, I think, on the second floor. Yeah. And um, it's okay. uh, was renovated, yeah. made into yeah. doctor's offices, the main hospital building itself. They're going to be renovating. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do with them. For his room scale, but I think I could show you something else real quick. Um, if you want to see where we went to school, high school, you can see it. Uh, and then we can't see that big building there over there in the end. Yeah, that's the Gilbert School. That's where I went to high school. You can see the I added to it since I was there in 1987 when I graduated. And, uh, and this is the um, hospital building itself. Uh, I noticed that the ceiling, this is an old Victorian building. This has got fish scales on it. You can see through the window here. And um, that's the parking lot down there. And uh, that's what it looks like. That's where I went to high school. This is the waiting room. It's shared with a pediatrician's office. Uh, I think the pediatrician's office is open now, too, um, but I know that I don't see too many families here, um, so probably just a few people coming in and out waiting for going to Taco and Bio and a lot of things. So, um, this afternoon, I'm going to try to get some videos in, and I'm going to give you my personal takes on President Obamination. Uh, I could just tell you right now, I think this guy has no grip of reality whatsoever. Considering the fact is there's no way the federal government can afford to pay for your college education idea. He wants to finance two years of college. Forget it. it ain't gonna happen. Why? Because we can't afford it. That's why. 
Um, this country, we got a person who spends money like a drunken sailor, and his Affordable Care Act, Max, Mark Gruber, or I think it's Max Gruber, really, um, screwed us up with that. Calling Americans idiot. Well, excuse me, Mr. Gruber, but you wrote a bill that's over 1,800 pages long. The average American is not going to sit there and plow through 1,800 pages, okay? So, I'm still very PO'd about that. Um, a few other things. Fortunately, I was one of the lucky ones I got to keep my doctor, but, you know, I'm going to tell you something. I really... Uh... I don't know. I just think that Obama is an idiot, to be honest with you. And I think he has obviously done a lot of damage to the American economy. And he wants to create new laws that take away American freedoms and civil liberties, as I see it with his new expansion of the CFAA Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. Um, I think that's not quite the answer, but I have to admit that, you know, cyber terrorism is real. I'm not going to say it isn't, but just think sometimes he doesn't have a grip of what the American people really want. If he really knew, um, and Congress would agree with him about it. As far as the Keystone oil pipeline goes, after we saw an oil pipeline done 50,000 barrels of crude oil into the Yellowstone River, one of the first things that brings my, begs the question is, what about the pipelines we have? Are they really a good choice, especially considering that the continent is becoming more seismically active, including the New Madrid Fault? Um, the New Madrid Fault is, right now, is... Uh, sitting, um, it's becoming seismically active. There's like four major natural gas transmission lines and a couple oil pipelines going through the states that the New Madrid Fault goes through. And that could be a really serious problem um, if all those lines should be broken because of the fault or whatever. Um, that could be a really big, bad thing. Um, I don't really know pipelines are really ideally the solution. Uh, I don't think the worst in trains carrying oil. Um, I think the trains probably might be a lot safer because, um, after all, they're already kind of compartmentalized in tanks, so, uh, tanker cars, so it would be easier, um, to transport crude oil by train, at least it's more likely to, if it, if a car leaks, you know, how many, you know how many gallons of oil, crude or gasoline or whatever is in those car, you know, that's it. That's, that's all there is. But it was, it's a pipeline. You don't know how much um, liquid or gas is in that line when you finally cap it up. We've already seen a couple of gas um, pipelines rupture. We've seen oil pipelines rupture and uh, we've seen certainly seen a lot of water line breaks too, pipelines for carrying water and, uh, and that's a serious issue. Um, so all these pipelines sometimes make me wonder if Keystone XL is really necessary, especially now that oil is going below you know, getting close to forty dollars per barrel for crude, um, it makes it. Um, are we likely to see the price of gasoline we saw in nineteen eighty seven when I graduated from high school? Yeah, yeah, we might actually say. I've already heard that there were some places gasoline was down to a dollar thirty a gallon. So yeah, it could happen. Um, very likely. Would that hurt the hybrids sales? Yeah, in fact, that's a sad thing. Just the American consumer doesn't seem to make any sense because every time price goes down, they sell their, their fishing car and they grab the gas guzzler. It's like, why don't you guys still drive the same car if you like it? And then, you know, when you got the price of your fuel goes down that much, then just put the extra money you didn't spend for gas and put it into the bank. That's what I would do. Uh, instead of grabbing the other car that guzzles gasoline like 
cheap beer. <laughs> um, but you know what? American consumers never made any sense anyway. I swear to God, Americans are stupid. No, he's have been. And I think I'm not holding this phone up high enough. Oops, sorry. Um, you know, I was just trying to talk to you and just trying to focus on the statements. That's the only thing is like with this phone is I feel like I have to be almost like a performer juggling between holding the phone up, thinking, and all that stuff at the same time. But I got pretty good at it. So, all right. So for now, I'm going to talk to you later. And don't forget to like or dislike share with your friends and enemies leave a comment below and yes i will try to put the date right this time okay talk to you later guys bye bye okay now obviously you saw there uh through the window of my high school i went to uh and graduated in 1987 from the gilbert school um, they expanded it quite a bit since i went there um now it's actually a middle school and high school at the time, it was just a high school. Once they used to have more people. And um, the reason why they did that was they wanted to um, um, try to re, uh, re um, shovel students around. The Gilbert School agreed to take so many of the 7th and 8th grade plus the regular high school students because they, um, there, was more, there was room for it. How I do it all, I don't know. It's just, uh, it's just one of those stupid things that they come up with, and I don't understand. Also, we did an experiment. We're, you know, we're going to have to show that demonstration sometime. What's that? Um, about the issue about, where does this screw come from? I have no idea. Oh, I know where it came from. It came from that motor that you worked on for Jimmy. Oh, okay. Um, the... The issue with the schools, I I gotta think that this is the one thing that this town has really is really fucked up over. Um, when I went to the Gilbert School, it still is a semi-private school. It is still has a, its own board of trustees, and technically Gilbert still pays uh, tuition for in-town residents to go there, as has been done since the Gilbert School started up. It is. For that reason alone, it's really a good way of doing it. I think because the Board of Trustees of the Gilbert Foundation really have uh, allocated a lot of funds to build up the local school system. Somebody don't do something like that for St. Anthony's. I, I don't think they do. Um, that's a really great question, though. I mean, St. Anthony's parochial school, it would be a great idea is if you could go ahead and... But they don't. They don't. So... And it's pretty expensive to go to St. Anthony's. It's not cheap to go to Gilbert either, from what I understand. No. Okay. Um, St. Anthony's, I think it's only $3,000 a year or something like that. I mean, it's not the most expensive way, but, um, you know, for some families, for St. Anthony's, it was, it's pretty expensive. I think that's the right. Maybe it's gone up now because everything else has gone up. So probably now it might be close to 4500 a year. Um, for a good Catholic parochial education. So, <clears throat> and then of course, there is no in town Catholic high school. So then everybody either goes to Gilbert or goes to Regional 7. Apparently, some of the town goes to Regional 7, and some of them go to Gilbert. Um, I went to Gilbert, which made sense because I lived on the Gilbert side of town. For the people who live over there on um, the um, Central Avenue, that is probably going to regional seven i heard some go to Gil some go to gilbert too yeah i think they do gilbert is still preferred for some things unless you can even get into the other uh programs that are specific that regional seven has like the vocational agricultural program the voag uh program which is definitely run by regional seven at least it was i think it still is um but I went to 7th and 8th grade at Regional 7 because I lived in New Hartford. And I tell you, I never quite liked Regional 7 that much. Um, it's just something about the environment itself that made me feel very uncomfortable. I felt more comfortable going to Gilbert. Uh, then again, I think maybe because the kids treated me better. 
because it was kind of just like you're starting over. You know, you get I moved, my parents moved here, and I started. You know, 1983. I started ninth grade, and I got a chance to start fresh. Most of the kids didn't even remember me. Um, some of them probably knew me for a mutual seven days, but most of them didn't. So I kind of got a chance to start fresh, so I didn't have to deal with the bullies anymore because they didn't go. They didn't go to Gilbert. So, um, but I kind of fulfilled my family's tradition. Most of my family members have gone to Gilbert. Um, except for a few, um, uh, my aunt didn't go to Gilbert, at least not for a few years anyway, as apparently, I guess, when she was in school, I guess Gilbert and the town were kind of negotiating contracts since she ended up going to Regional 7. Um, but most of the people in my family went to Gilbert. Um, so, the problem now is, yeah, back 21st century, um, I want to talk to you also about the Keystone Pipeline thing that Congress wants to push. Um, do we really need this? Honestly, I mean, we got a huge glut of oil and natural gas now. We're not exactly short on oil and natural gas, okay? And running a pipeline from Canada to Texas is just to get Canadian tar sands, it's no sense. Okay, first of all, it's a big liability. you got to go right over the New Madrid fault line. And that is an area that is like a giant hub for trouble um, because you've got like four or five natural gas lines going through, a couple of gasoline lines, a couple of oil pipelines, maybe other fuels, maybe even water for God's sakes. I don't know. Um, electricity, and if you ask me, I think it's a guaranteed, um, hot, it is a seismic hot spot, and it's getting active, as are the other fault lines and the ring of fire. So you have to understand something here. And all these things are going over a seismic fault. It's bad enough, and we already have suffered... 50,000 gallons of crude oil ended up in the Yellowstone River because the pipeline broke. We've already had gas line breaks. We've already had water line breaks and other pipes, lines, and electrical systems are not necessarily always up to code. How can you keep up with all the electrical and all the code? It's almost like you've got these things underground. They try to inspect them, but we have only so many inspectors. And will you please not do that, Mr. Kitty, because you're basically... It's really kind of distracting. Just sit down, please. Not there. Well, I guess there. Oh, I guess so. Anyway. Oh, I want... Do you want to show him the stand? You never showed him the stand. I never showed you the stand. Yes, I will show you the stand. This is the camera stand that we bought. By the way, I'll... Just do me a favor. Just get down for me because you're distracting me. Okay. This is the stand I bought um, for the camera. And it's it's really not a bad little stand. It's a little shorter than I thought it would be, but it's it's pretty good. It's more physically smaller than I thought it would be, too. It's a stand. What does it matter? First thing I noticed about this Islam is it's very... Um, Got the very simple tightening, loosening control on it. It's got a, like a nut on it. Yeah. Okay. The problem by the way, with the stand is, is when you screw it into these bigger, older cameras, like this one, is is that they are very tippy. Um. Well, society screwed to a wall or a floor or to a table or a ceiling. Yes. Okay. So getting it to stand on its own like this is pretty much a lucky shot. Plus, it was designed for lighter cameras. This camera is a heavy camera. I didn't realize how heavy it is. So if you don't get your stand tightened just right, it's going to... For example, if I loosen the screw... Let's say, for example, um, I didn't realize it was loose. So let's say I, I'm trying to... Let's say I think I have the key here... 
It's going to stay right down like that. It's going to stay down like that because it's going to be loose. Yeah. So. Okay. So, still pretty cool, though. It's it's cool. But you got to screw it to the wall. Let me get really practical to use it this way. Um, now, speaking of loose, we talk about... you. I talked briefly about your violin plan. Yes, you did. Okay. What do you want to talk about? Yes, I will. I wanted for a long time to learn how to play a musical instrument. Um, my family never gave me or my sister the opportunity. Um, I mean, in elementary school, we played musical instruments. The school paid for the lessons and stuff for music class. And it wasn't bad, except for um, I wasn't dedicated to it. I really did not get into woodwinds, like the reed recorder I was playing. That's okay, but it was just not... I kind of remember that thing. I was like, my mom still calls it the toot. <laughs> the toot. That's how you do it. Yeah, blow the whistle. That's because to me, it's like, whistle. Cause it's, it was a plastic reed recorder. You know, you know, you had little finger holes to represent the different notes. Um, I never really got into it. And uh, I tried to just, I, I think I was just wasn't, you know, very dedicated to it as a child. Um... I do kind of like other musical instruments, too. I like, as I said, I like organ. You ain't going to be walking around an organ in this house. There's no way. No, no, not a pipe organ, anyway. Oh, God. Pipe organ. <laughs> I could just see. You've had those big, full ranking of pipes in here. Yeah, that would be pretty big. It would take a lot of space, especially when you get into the sub-octaves, like the... Like the you know, the first, second, third octave, and you're going to be, and then you're going to the eighth octave, and you're from bass where the floor vibrates to the high C's when the whole windows rattle. I don't think anyone would appreciate that. I wouldn't, I don't know. Besides, where would they put it? Exactly. I mean, my apartment is just about the same size as some tiny houses. You ain't got to be able to put an organ in here. I'm like, what are you going to do? Build an extension to the house to have an organ? I mean, a big cathedral organ. Oh, I I always love playing. I st playing around with musical instruments. I mean, keep pianos. Okay, I can make happy noises, but um, musically, uh, I wasn't really. I really wasn't dedicated to it. I wanted to learn, but it just didn't have the, the dedication as a child. I was just too damn hyper. You know. Well, you're still hyper now. Pretty much. Yeah. Okay. So, but still, I think you're right. I think you would benefit by having access to an, um, a musical instrument. Now, you're old enough that maybe you could learn and have the patience to use it. So, anyway, the point is, is um, I'm really looking forward to um, getting to do something cool um, in, my, in my later years in life. I haven't heard anything from Ed or Tony lately, so I can't tell you how they're doing because they haven't called me. So I don't know what they're up to. And I also do not know when the stickies for those little um, IR cut filters will be here, as I said in my vlog this morning. And that's one thing. I am very sorry I said the wrong friggin' year. I, I know a lot of people do it. I know, but it's such an embarrassment. I had to go back and change the Or when I uploaded it, I forgot to actually put the name of the vlog. Oops. Yeah, we did a combined vlog. We put the same vlog on both channels. And uh, unfortunately, let me forgot to mention the name of the vlog. I'll have to edit that down. Well, we're not going to edit it. I mean, I have to edit the name and uh, to match the description. And you got to fix your name. Yeah. Also, we got uh, a couple compliments from a couple fans. I want to thank you guys for, for for telling me and Lumi that you appreciate our work. We do try. Uh, sometimes we screw up too, and I'm really sorry um, that some, we haven't done a video lately. There's so many reasons why. I just, first of all, I've been feeling kind of a little bit under the weather emotionally. So I haven't really been quite up to speed uh, on the videos, one thing. And then when I get up, so I feel better. I get up and I'm like, and then my back hurts. Again, it could be because of, 
you know, your health is not as good as it could be. I know my back spring is as good as it could be. Oh, absolutely not. Your back spring sucks. You know, my back spring sucks. My mattress itself is okay, but the back spring is another story altogether. I, I gotta get I Shit, you might as well make a box spring. You gotta do it. Yeah, um, I'm thinking about it. Maybe just make, well, make a box out of wood, uh, plywood, and, and then just basically replace that crappy box spring with it. Exactly. Because that will be more rigid. I don't care if it's hard as a rock. It's a box spring, damn it. You ain't going to be laying on that box spring. You get comfortable with sleeping on the floor. I slept on the floor in the living room plenty of times watching TV shows that are boring me to tears. You know, I wonder, if, speaking of tears, if the, 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 the... By the way, hey, you haven't talked about the Kansas City Report lately. What's the story with the eye drops? I'm still taking them. They still work. They're still helping good halos. I'm seeing better, but it seems I'm becoming farsighted. Is that bad? Oh, it's not good. Yeah, okay. I'll take your word for it. So, okay, so you're seeing distance and everything, um, but... Um, is your distance seem sharper? A little bit. Okay. Um, by the way, I see that most of you and I have got more, at least one more subscriber. You got two more. I got one more. We get, okay, so you got two, I got one, so that's pretty good. We gotta get more people watching our channel. Definitely. And... By the way, you probably have ever asked your questions about this cat. I, do you have any questions about this kitty cat? Because you know what? He's always in the picture. Yeah. What about Rosa? What about Fabe? What about this kitty cat? Why does he like... Why you see where he is? Because he's a camera nut. He's like, he's like me and you. He's like, oh, I gotta get in front of the camera and upstage humans. Oh. She's do it to me every time, too. Yeah, we're trying to be professional and we got a cat in her face. Well, I I think that um you can't help that. This this that's just fame for you. Yeah. And uh the sun's kinda getting ready to creep its way in again. Yes it is. How are we gonna get ready to wrap this up anyway? It's running kinda long. But um I wanna ask all of you guys if you have suggestions for video topics. I'd like to know because, like Lumi and I both said earlier, we both need your suggestions because we're running out of ideas. And uh, I'm willing to do anything within reason. Um, I mean, don't ask me to go bunching jumping off the Mount Hollowbird Avenue Bridge. Oh, please don't. That bridge will probably collapse. <laughs> it probably would. And besides that, the water right now is really cold. Oh, yeah, it's cold. Um, speaking of the weather forecast, it looks like we're going to have temperatures in the next few days about zero degrees Celsius in the daytime. We're at lows in the mm, about minus seven, minus eight degrees. Nighttime, not really too bad. So, anyway, as I said, the temperatures for, up, um, for the night will be up to about minus seven. Daytime highs will be about zero degrees Celsius. Saturday, we may see some snow. Nothing too much. Uh, we might we'll see the temperature slowly start to decline. Uh, but it will um, improve. So don't worry about it. And uh, for the time being, I want to let us Don't forget to remind you to like or dislike. Comment in this comment section below here. Share with your friends and enemies. And subscribe if you have not done so. And let me know if you have ideas for new videos. Okay? Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye, guys.